Okay, everyone. So I'm joined here today with Dirk Christoph. Dirk recently did a presentation at the Greater Reset on net positivity. He's also co-creating the world's first net positive village and uh, a net positive housing system called Refugee.co and also has launched a consulting net positivity partner business also. So I'm here to talk with Dirk about what net positivity is, what the Paradise Syndicate network is, and everything else that he's doing. So first of all, Dirk, thank you for joining me. Oh, it's my pleasure, Fabrizio. It's always great to see you and connect to you. And uh, just very humbled uh, to know that you know, you're doing so many great things in the world, connecting people, and to be here is a, is a great opportunity for me to you know, hopefully share some, some enlightening ideas. Would you mind just sharing a little bit about a little bit about your background, where you're from, and what is the what was the awakening moment for you? Right on. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I come from somewhat of a traditional German family. Um, I was born in Bavaria, and um, you know, I probably never really fit in as everybody else. But I I was still living a fairly normal life, and then. I did a family normal career with becoming an engineer and becoming and did a, did a double degree in, in M- engineering and MBA. And um, then I wanted to work for BMW, become you know, the best employee that BMW ever had. And, and I did all of that and, and, and really didn't fit in. It was just, you know, I, I, I had ideas that I wanted to uh, get across and, and do and create. And while I was, you know, Doing that, I was really pushing and a lot of resistance. I just found that this entire structure was just not ready to be innovated upon. And I was almost always driven by this idea of like, how can we do things differently, better? Uh, what is, what's the real reason why we're doing things? Like I could never just have somebody tell me, well, this is how it is. And you, now you accept it. There was never a sufficient answer to me. And um, so when I did this, um, when I, when I, realized that corporate is not the world for me. I, then the next best thing after this was to, to go dive into the startup world, right? Where another place where I could, you know, prove my, uh, I guess, and back in the day, prove my worth in a way. And um, then uh, I started this, this uh, co-founded this startup so still exa- existing, which is in the software world and the area of VR, virtual reality um, training. Uh, that's where it ended up at least that's when when we created it we, it was all over the place uh, for some time but um i basically worked 85 hours a week right and if you work 85 hours a week like i literally was sleeping in the office i was um was the last one to leave at 11 at night slept in the office in the morning went to the fitness studio when i was the first one back on on it and that um, that's a very interesting lifestyle because obviously you, you know, you're being successful, you're doing all kinds of things, you're traveling around the world, but at the same time, you're really not living, you're not realizing what's going on because it's so focused on the busyness that you don't really get to understand what's going on, going on on there. So what really did the trick for me, and I think that would, is, is probably the case for many, even of the viewers right now is when I did my third startup, I did basically the same thing that I did in the second but I rearranged things. So instead of working 85 hours a week, I wait, I worked five hours a week and I still earned the same income. So I didn't have to worry about money for a while. And I didn't have to, um, you know, do all the micromanaging that you tend to do in the end of the, in a, in a, in a business and just had time to meditate and to do yoga and to ask myself, and this is kind of like where it all started for me was the question, what should I do with my time? Because evidently, you know, looking around you right now and looking, you know, where, where you are, people make money in millions of different ways. Like everything that I'm surrounded in, even like somebody made that roof, right? And somebody made my shirt, somebody made m- m- these headphones. So you can make money in so many different ways, but what is the right way to earn a living? What is the right way of dedicating your time to something? That was questions that were driving me at that time to ask, to ask myself, how can I get to a place where um, my time is optimally used, ideally used, you know? And that, that question, what can we do to, to get down to the ideal? What does the world need? You know, that was another huge question. What is it the world right now? Not, not just what I want, but what is the world, what does the world actually need? And it just came out of this feeling, looking out into the world and seeing, you know, degenerative systems 
uh, chugging along and destroying the planet in, in, over time. And that notion that things are not going right, that I think really jolted me into, into this um, journey of, of awakening. And obviously having the time to take care of myself really helped. And so, yeah, this journey of awakening, when you came across net positivity, was it something that you'd already that had already come to you and then you you found you found a book on it and you thought wow this is what it this is what i was this is what i was already coming up with or did you come across it and then it was like oh this is what i need i i was given the right inspirations during the right time and i i was kind of like driven by this thing what can we do how can we solve this puzzle that uh, we are su supposedly in where we cannot uh, move forward and you know the, all we have is sustainability and then I was like, sure, that actually was interesting. It was a video that first got me started on it, which was a, a video about a, a coral technology that can restore a coral reef by changing the pH value around the coral reef. It basically becomes an alkaline reef, and hence it becomes a reef where coral thrive and, and not uh, suffer on. It. And when I saw that, that a bunch of humans just came together, they built this reef, they put it into the, into the ocean, and then... Before it was all dead coral, everything was destroyed. And then after it, like a year after, which is no time in, in coral growing firms, a year after it was a beautiful uh, biotope of, you know, all kinds of life. And it had, it looked like it's been there for decades. And that, that to me was the moment where the coin dropped and they're like, oh, we can totally have a positive impact. We don't just have to have, you know, the focus on the negative all the time. We can totally be positive and then from there on you know the next part was to um to come up with the idea of net positive right to and, and then i and that entire thing just kept coming in in with meditations inspirations and all that kind of thing and i didn't even realize that net positivity is a thing uh, until like two three years years in when then i read that you know the uh, harvard had written about it i think in in 2015 um, for the first time, and I was, you know, already doing it like two years in, I realized, oh, yeah, Harvard written about it already. So it's kind of like one of those moments where I guess similar to this idea with the light bulb and, you know, the telephone and all those things where an invention kind of like popped up in, in short um, succession in the world and multiple different places independent of it, uh, each other. Um, that's happened with net positivity. And then I guess one more point, which is really important here is like, I am very grateful that it happened that way because this kind of like gives us in, um, a, a unique perspective on net positivity. It's not like you read something that somebody said and then you're already kind of like looking at, at the concept through their looking glass. And I think that's what enabled us to come up with, you know, business models and, and uh, concepts that are just way beyond what even is existing right now in the net positivity world. I mean, um, even the coin, I think that the, the term net positivity might be something that we are actually um, full responsible for. I mean, net positive was something, and that's what it was in the papers. But, you know, there's a reason, for some reason, nobody had thought about net positivity until we did. So that's why we own netpositivity.com, which we're writing just a book about, we're writing a book about net positivity right now to really coin that term because that's actually the exact kind of like, um pond on to sustainability right sustainability net positivity those are competing uh concepts in a way net positivity some people will be watching this and wondering what are you talking about i'll quickly say what i think it is and then if you expand on that so what i understand net positivity to be having watched the presentation you did at the greater reset which i'll stick in the um, below the video uh, and also talking to you as well is the idea that our actions so i see it also as a kind of an economic model so our actions instead of um uh, overall any action that we take should have more of a positive impact than a negative impact as an outcome that's definitely a, a big part of it i think it's you can really look at it as a, an entire paradigm for act, acting it's like um to realize that we always, everything we do has some type of impact. And there's only three types of impact that you can have. You can have a net negative impact, you can have a neutral impact, and you can have a positive impact. Negative impact is what we've called life, 
up until this point. You know, it's just pervasive all around us to the point that we don't even see it as negative. Um, we're just like, well, that's just, you know, the cost of doing business. That's just the cost of living. You know, there's no way of avoiding that, right? R driving a car, for instance. It's like there's no, in, in, in a negative impact only um, paradigm, in the sustainability paradigm, there's really hardly anything that you can do um, about, you know, having some type of CO2 emission, for instance. But um, in a net positive impact, world and then that, that positive impact paradigm you realize that you're basically just analyzing what's the damage that i'm doing like what am i making worse and then on that same scale and all of those scales that you are actually making worse you're looking to overcompensate that error with error or like that damage with a positive action so um it's not that like, let's say this will give you an example let's say we we go hiking right and we have happen to have a bunch of water bottles with us and you know drink the water bottles and then one of them falls away and it get, gets lost somewhere on the trail and now um we can all be very sad inside and be like oh it's terrible like you destroyed the planet a little bit and um and leave it at that and go home and feel sad or we can look along the trail and find other pieces of trash that are also plastic i don't need even bottles and take you know three bottles and a bunch of other pl plastic trash and take that home with us and then ideally eliminate it, not just recycle it. It's an entire there's a rabbit hole to go down, down to. But at that point, what we did is we actually had a net positive impact on that trail, right? We made it better. Although we did throw out one, we took on three. So there's a net of two bottles less on the planet, or in this case, on that trail than before. And that is the that's the mentality. So stop being um you know so focus on the negative focus on the positive that you can create and maximize the positive and by maximizing the positive you can actually have a way greater impact on the world than by only trying to like minimize the negative and you can actually you know, um, undo not just your own damage in the moment but you can do un undo the damage that you've done in the past and you can even undo the damage of other beings around you Right, which is a way more powerful concept than trying to just you know be uh, yourself, and this is like it, it's it's a it's a completely different uh, approach to it. One basically says become less and less, and the other one says become more and more. So um, I guess that's 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 one w good way of looking at it. But there's plenty of different ways of looking at at um, net positivity as a paradigm. Net positivity, I mean, that's a perfect example of something that we can do in our everyday lives. And also, um, it's, it's so true that if you, if you drop your plastic bottle and it, fall, it goes down the river, most people stop there. You know, like they stop with, oh, I didn't want to do that. I, I, you know, I feel bad. It wasn't intentional. But, but then the next step is well what can i do now so that when i walk away from this situation i've created more good than the negative impact what is it that people can do with their like in their lives right and there's many many things that we can do but like on that scale i think that you're talking about like what how they can they practice net positivity and it's really something that you can do every single moment you can walk into a room and be like how can i leave this room a little better than i found it right so um what i tend to do often is like i go into the kitchen and i'm like see the kitchen sink and i'm like okay so i just made this plate dirty so how about i wash two plates for the plate that i just made dirt and hence i never have any plates to wash because it's constantly getting you know net positively impacted and um and and that's that that kind of mentality really is i think that people can train and foster in themselves where they just go and hey how can i improve that how can i improve that in in other words you know net positivity is really just another way of really saying improving which is you know brings you better back to the concept of better versus less bad and the thing with cpn as well is that um you know you were saying practicing net positivity i, I always talk about nurturing a positive perspective or a positive outlook by every time that you look at a piece of news, see if you can find the glass half full perspective from what you're reading and what you're doing in a way. I, I think both are important. It's the, the, the training the mind to look uh, at the positive, to look in a positive way, 
But what you're talking about is the next level, which is to take action. And that's actually what we're now focusing on with CPN is taking action. Um, what I wanted to talk about now is expanding that plastic bottle uh, example to what you talked about in the, at the Greater Reset as well. Because one of the things that was a paradigm shift for me, I've talked to you about this before, was this idea that you can have permanent growth on a finite planet. Yeah, so, um, I mean, on the, on the plastic model, I guess what we have to say in order to finish that equation is to realize that recycling isn't working. You know, like recycling is a pipe dream in a way because you can only recycle um, a certain rate. Most of it just goes into landfill sooner or later. So you might, and, and the global recycling rate is probably around 10%. So only about 10% of all the plastic ever gets created really gets recycled. And once it gets recycled, it's just another opportunity to get thrown away. So over time, pretty much every, every plastic just sooner or later lands, lands in some type of landfill situation. So what's the better alternative? to recycling, it's elimination. It's just eliminating more plastic than you create. And if you um, did that and you, you found a smart way, and you know, there's one in the talk that I gave, um, to eliminate plastic, then over time, there's less and less and less and less and less plastic on the world versus more and more and more and more plastic on the world. And that's actually net positive, right? So how could we apply net positivity to um, you know, an entire economy. That's a stretch of the imagination for many. Um, but if you could think about it, let's say we we'll we make a small economy, right? We make a village, okay? And we um, we just look at that village as a black box for now, just not make it too complicated. And basically, within that village, um, there's all these different actors, there's different businesses, and there's specific, different people, and they're all just having a net positive impact, right? One net positive impact after the next, after the next. Nothing's really make, made worse, but everything is just made better and better and better and better and better. In that situation, um, better really depends on you know what the problem is. Let's say, for instance, in the moment, moment we have a plastic problem. Until we don't have a plastic problem anymore, then we need a new better, right? And then we can go to another idea. Let's say we want to plant plants until there's plants everywhere, there's trees everywhere. Then we don't, we cannot plant trees anymore. So there's a new better. So we can always ask ourselves what positive is. Positive is obviously dependent on the situation. So you actually constantly do a readjust on to what the next positive would be once you would have solved one situation. And that village, that little closed system would constantly get closer and closer and closer to the ideal. And in that way, um, the only reason that, you know, we can only have um, a um, limited growth for a net negative economy on a finite planet is because the economy destroys the planet and takes up resources and, you know, uses them up and, and then they're not there anymore. But, but first of all, we are not living on a finite planet that way that it's a black box with no inputs and outputs, but really we're getting constantly you know, bombarded with energy by, by the sun, right? So we have all kinds of inputs all the time. That's one. And the other one is if you could make it so that instead of you, um, obviously there's certain practices that you don't do anymore, right? You wouldn't be um, probably fracking the, the world's uh, ecosystems because that just creates so much negative impact in the world that it's really hard to create a positive that offsets and overcompensates all of that. So that's, that's, but that's part of the mentality, right? That is to reduce your negative impact is still an impetus of that positivity. We just don't stop there. And so if the, if the impact of your action, the net impact of your action really is positive, then, <coughs> sorry, then you can literally go and, and constantly grow because there is nothing that you're destroying or making finite or taking away from that um, would, would, in the end of the day, um, be a restriction to growth. And that growth, obviously, as I said, it's, not, it's, not, it's really important to understand. It's not the same type of growth that the unhindered you know, uh, capitalist net negative society has been doing you know, it's not oh yeah we can do another fracking operation here and another one there and another one there until the planet is completely destroyed that is growth that is net negative growth right and there is in it's the, the hard thing is to understand and to imagine how does net positive growth look like but once you understand that net positive growth is actually pretty much exactly what nature does right when when there is um 
uh, when there is a, 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 a forest fire, let's say and something, the entire forest just gets completely wiped out. What happens with that land after 10 years, after 20 years, after 30 years? Well, it comes back and nature comes back and then it's, there's some pioneer plants that come in and they provide the shade for another plant that comes in to uh, do the nitrogen fixation, another plant that retains moisture in the soil. So every plant actually has a net positive impact on the ecosystem and just ecosystem becomes better and better and better and more and more well-rounded in growth. Like, and that's literally also, there's a lot of exponential growth happening in that moment until it kind of like levels out because the um, growth is, is um, leveling towards a more and more ideal state. Right. And then it, it becomes harmonic and there's more and more of a ecosystem nature going on, different animals and plant and plants and biodiversity sprouts out. And that's then the next level of positivity, really. Um, when, when let's say in the first stage of it, it's just tried to recuperate and regenerate, then it just goes down the path of beauty in a way. If that makes sense. Uh, so permanent growth on finite planet, if you're producing and the things that you're producing are having a, mo a more of a positive impact than a negative impact, you can also improve that same product as well. Absolutely. So, so you're, so, you know, so you, so you're not only now reducing plastic, but you're also planting trees. You're also finding an alternative way, you know, hemp or something to make materials and Absolutely. you can keep improving those, those um, things that you're producing. Absolutely. This is, there's a concept that I think that's the furthest out for most people is, is what, what we call what you just, just described. We call that full spectrum, um, that positivity, which is basically when you start, um, when, when you don't only improve or overcompensate the negative part of what you're, of you're doing, but you actually just start doing positive things in other areas and maybe even all of the areas just by having the ability to do so. Right. And that's I mean, it's it's a really stretch of the mind kind of experiment. And I think there's an entire lesson or, you know, course nece nece necessary for people to really grasp um, that how this can work and how this because it's like so programmed into our minds that we could never grow indefinitely on a on a finite planet because we are thinking that growth is a certain thing, you know, like nature has been growing indefinitely on this planet for millions of years and that's what what it, un, undefinite growth looks like on a finite planet it just becomes more and more intricate more and more um complex and beautiful and, and resilient in a way with more and more biodiversity and more and more um amazing locations in a way that are building themselves out to nature and that's something that we, we have to understand, you know, the, the fractal nature of the universe is something that is constantly evolving and constantly growing and constantly, you know, uh, becoming more and more. And it's not uh, true that there is some type of dead end. It's just that's just the dead end of one paradigm where the next paradigm starts. Yeah, I think that most people, well, I can only really speak for myself, but I think most people, they imagine growth means destruction. So we yeah. need to destroy things to, to make things. And what we're talking about here, what you're talking about is making things that make, that make, that make the world better than it was before. And I think one way to do that, as you said, you know, is to give examples. Let's say what we would be used to is a world where we mine for resources, destroying the planet, taking, extracting benefits out of the earth, and then we are using them and applying them over here, and then they're basically useless after that, right? Um, and what I'm talking about is to say, hey, what, what is the source of infinite, um, wh what can we use as a source that is constantly um, not just renewable, but actually net positive in its growth, and, and that could be vegetable matter, right, for instance, right? To know there's, uh, for instance, we, are, we invest in a company that does the world's first 100% um, biological uh, epoxy resin, which is toxin-free, it uh, doesn't yellow, it's UV stable, and it's literally a material, it's a resin that we can use to, because it's derived from essentially glycerin, so it's essentially derived from a derivative of vegetable oil. Um, we can literally 
build with that indefinitely because there's always some plants that you can grow, get vegetable out of. You can use this, make this material out of, and then you have inf and you can combine it even with pretty much infinite amounts of different other materials to create, uh, um, you know, create new new types of materials out of it. Um, and so what that does in the end of the day, it is um, giving you a undepletable source of, um, of building material. Or another example would be to go out and use um, vegetable oil to make solar panels. People don't realize that, but there is a technology where you can literally use um, vegetable-derived um, uh, matter to create solar panels that are basically like windows but they are almost completely derived from, from, from organic matter. And that is, that's the kind of like shift where you go, out, oh, I'm not dis distracting, I'm not destroying, I'm not taking away a resource which is finite, I'm actually adding and creating more resources of something that wasn't there by, you know, alchemy of um, the, the plant world in a way. Does that make sense? Sure, yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm aware of time. Yeah. And we still haven't got into what the projects that you're involved in yet. One of them, the refugee.co, is an example of how you can make something that has a net, net positive impact, you know, a thing, although obviously, you know, it's many parts to that thing. Um, so maybe talk a little bit about that. And then also you mentioned already, you know, we could take a village. And so also you've got the net positive village. Um, maybe you'd like to just briefly as, as well as much as you like it's your time i have time absolutely no um so refugico is basically born out of this idea that you know we we saw um that there wasn't really any net positive building solutions out there we didn't find anyone where you could build a house and then the world is better because you built that house like that's something i just haven't seen out there so it's like why isn't that a thing why can we, why is there no building solution where you make a house and the world is better because you built built it than it was before? And so that's where that thought started. And then we looked into um, how could we pull that off? And in that in that process, again, like similar to the points before, it was like once you deeply connect and you're connected to the quantum field and you get your inspirations and you get your marching orders. Then um, you know you'd be surprised of the power of concepts that can come from there because you know it's infinite knowledge. So we ended up having a um, a, a system that is actually not just making the world a better place, but it's actually also a highly abundant system to use to build. The point of, of Refugico is then that we actually can build a house that is up to ten times more profitable to build. And, in, in, and it's not built the same way as a conventional house. You know, a conventional house goes out and it, it's just one big building that you build in one go, right? And there's numerous reasons for why we do this, but, but it really doesn't make a lot of sense that way. You know, if you look, if you look at um, nature, nature just doesn't just pop a tree into existence, but there's a seed and then it grows to be a seedling and then it grows to be a small plant and then eventually it becomes a tree. Then in the same sense, Refugico can grow over time, right? We can have, we can start it as, actually, we can start it even from a glamping stage, from a tent. So we can turn a tent into a one-bedroom apartment, the one-bedroom apartment into a multiple-bedroom apartment, and that can be going on to become a villa or even an apartment complex is that what you want to do. But over time, and it's optimized for that, so it's made to be adaptable, it's made to be expendable, and that's really the, um, a, a game changing quality because that allows you to do a house with very little investment and then grow it over time. Makes you, maybe even not you yourself paying for it, but maybe the person that is that are renting your place paying for that essentially. And that gets you to a place where it's just a very financially abundant thing to do. And and then it's it's all made out of you know uh, toxin free materials. It's made out of net positive materials. There's um, concepts worked into it where one one refugio actually has a net reforestation effect of about 500 trees. So each um, refugio actually practically quantifiably enhances the world. And you know they're they're um, they're made to be. Again, this is another paradigm which i think really important they're made to be beautiful they're made to give you that feeling of wow this is an amazing place i love this place i like i want to live here as opposed to this idea of oh let's just reduce ourselves and become less and less of a of a 
nuisance to the world and and the only thing that we deserve is living in a little shack somewhere uh, that's really not how we should be approaching this we should be embracing nature and the nature is, has plenty of, of of resources to provide us with an amazing life and that should be really the goal i think for for everybody to have the best possible life that they can have um aligned with with uh, you know obviously the creation of the ideal world for everybody in every all sentient beings yeah the the paradigm so far in order to have as little negative impact as possible on on the planet has been moving into a tiny house uh, you know like going and hiding away and using as few resources as possible and so what you're talking about now is having a luxurious house that you can you know slowly build up um and that uh, and that everything and so that and having that house actually improves the planet yeah exactly. it's fundamentally different Pe people okay so now people are probably thinking okay yeah we can do it with individual products um it's possible to do it with uh, a plastic bottle with a house what about a what about a town what about a city yeah so, so now we get to the village yeah exactly so the the net positive village um in itself is a is a product a, a process where we go in and we realize well um society is made up of different components right we have storage we have commerce we've got energy production we've got agriculture we've got places in which we live so there's different components that make up society and in a way a village is 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 sort of like the base building block of how society works right i mean we used to have farms and and that was the building block of society then we had towns and now we're kind of like going back a little bit into this community setup where we we're looking to create a village that is um uh basically for a certain community um now the 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 struggle that i think many eco villages and many intentional communities have have to face is just that it's great for you to buy a piece of land and then go out there and you know grow food and everything. that's all cool the problem is if you are just exiting the financial world and you stop you put you know abundance to the wayside then sooner or later you run into conflicts just because you're creating so much more pressure for yourself and so the net positive village is really a holistic approach to how can we create a blueprint for a human society which is literally making the previous one obsolete how can we create a um container of a village where every pieces of it every component is net positive the houses are net positive the businesses are net positive the way to grow food is net positive and we're just creating this uh, environment where all of the actions leads to an improvement of the local ecosystem and and the the village itself and it's also really really mainly tied into the concept of of um abundance through net positive business right so that's the component one of the components i feel is really missing in many con intentional communities like how are people going to make money how are they going to earn a living how are they going to um prosper because we are again being being let down this false path of sustainability what we are doing is we we think that it's a good idea to become self sustainable or that it's a good idea to become um you know self sufficient i'll tell you uh, an immediately better concept than you know self sufficiency is self abundance right look into becoming abundant with what you do as opposed to getting just enough so that you can sustain life they're both that she obviously self abundance is self sufficient but self sufficiency is not self abundant so if you're shooting for self sufficiency you're putting the bar so low that you're really going to get to a place that's probably not such an amazing place to be and this is really important why because if we want to if we as conscious community are really going to um play the role that we're here to play then we have to realize that there's 95% of the rest of humanity that we are basically trailblazing a path for right is this our responsibility to show the rest of humanity to say hey we can do we can live in a completely different way and this different way is actually better not just for us that we are you know these highly conscious spiritual snowflake beings it's great for everybody you look you could literally come into net positive village li live net positively and 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 make the world a better place even without having had your awakening journey once we are 
in that place where people are um, having a net positive impact just through their existence, we got it solved. Because um, at that point, um, everybody can do it and not just you know the, the few that have had the pleasure of or, or a scary experience of, of waking up to the realization that we're all one be. Yeah, and I, also the, the idea of money, you know, that um, uh, the, the limiting belief that, that money is inherently evil is quite common. I think I went through that as well. You know, you go, you go down the rabbit holes, you see that there's, you know, private corporations printing the money with infinite power. And then you kind of think, okay, money is evil, but money isn't evil. That's a, that's a huge, huge, huge input. I, I was just meeting um, with a friend yesterday and talked about that, which is really um, such a blessing to have the net positive paradigm. Because now you realize that money in a net positive paradigm is not evil. It's actually the source of regeneration. It's the source of, of, of real improvement towards the ideal. So it's, I think personally that, that really the, the reason why we had so much, so much dissonance between money and the conscious community is because 99.9% um, .9 of all businesses in the world right now are net negative. So it's, it's reasonable to assume that business is negative and money is negative because most of it is mm. no question but that doesn't mean um just because 99.9 .9 percent of of the world is like that doesn't mean that everything is like that or that it has to be like that right and um again you know there's a difference between currency and money there's a difference between using a fiat uh currency that is a, a, a scam yeah it is a scam but at the same time does that um take away from the concept of energy exchange through an in change medium that we all agree on. I don't think it does, you know, like that's, that's what money is really. And yeah. And how my monetary system has the current ones that we are using have been hijacked, um, you know, a long time ago. And, um, and, and it becomes more and more evident to more and more people, but that just means that we need a different setup, right? We just want to find a, a, a system that works for us, for us that we are part of that conscious community. Um, and then, you know, probably overextend that down the road to to uh, other beings as well but the interchange is not a good or bad thing it's just what you make of it what you do with your money is 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 that so let, i'm i'm gonna maybe ruffle some feathers here by saying that you know abundance in a net positive paradigm so if you are making the world a better place while you're earning money it's actually good for you and it's good for the planet and that makes it a moral um calling even that makes it to a place where you, you should not it's not only okay to earn money in a net positive paradigm it's actually the solution to earn money in a net positive paradigm and the more money you make the more businesses that you create the more positive impact you will you have will have created in the world and hence it's a it's it's uh, you're actually improving the state of the world by becoming wealthy Okay, that is a crucial mind shift because once you can do that, then there is no moral, um, you know, conflict between money, success, and 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 your spiritual life. It's actually the spiritual solution to to, to money and business is net positivity. You said that you know the the net positive village. You're making this net. You know the net positive village will make the old obsolete, and some people might be feeling or thinking, yeah, but you know, you're going to be doing this village over there and who's going to actually want to copy it. So maybe you'd like to elaborate just a little bit on how it, how you can make the old obsolete by building this this new paradigm. Yeah, so first I think we, we need to understand that most houses are built in the wrong locations. You know, like where are most houses built? They're built in the cities. Is it really a good place to live in the city in terms of what we know with 15-minute cities and all that nonsense that's coming down the pipe? Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of people that realize the cities are not really the best place. And I think that it's going to be um, the, the opposite of what previously was the land flight where we all, you know, were gravitating towards the cities. A lot of the conscious community and, and, and related segments of humanity in a way are now moving out to the land and they're looking for, for uh, places there. And there happen to be not enough houses on the land, right? Which is really the place that humanity should live because we can live in harmony with the land. So um, with both Refugico and the Net Positive Village, it's not just one 
project and this is the one little community and that's it it is a paradigm shift okay so um with net positive village for instance what we are what we're seeing is that we put this out there this idea that a village could become net positive and we are being approached by existing communities that just knock on our door and they're like hey can you show us how to become net positive we would we have this established community here and we'd love to work with you um we want to become net positive too and we actually help them we consult them we partner with them we we give them access to technologies we give them access to paradigms to business models that can actually bring abundance into their village that can bring um you know net positivity net positive impact in their village and then and they become a net positive village so that's really the vision here is to create a global network of um net positive villages and i think you know if if you are watching this and you're running an existing eco village or an eco community and this uh, resonates with you then you know reach out and we're definitely that's what the main goal of this was in the end of the day always is to create a global society of um of a net positive uh, kind in a way so that's that's where where the net positive village is and then with refugico the house that you're building it has a cost attached to it but then also has a value attached to it right so the really important part here is like the equation where the value that the house generates vastly outperforms the cost that it has right and that's where refugico is really really optimized at i mean it, this is really something that people will not even believe when i say what i'm just going to say is like we have a house that can pay itself off an order of magnitude faster than a conventional house and that is something that is just you know unheard of you can go to refugi f r e f u g i dot c o again r e f u g i dot c o refugi co um and then you can register there there's a one hour presentation that walks people through how we can achieve a net positive building that is actually 10x more profitable than a conventional building and once you get to those numbers then you you realize there is a infinite amount of potential that behind behind that because we can create buildings that are just outperforming the conventional approach of how to do it and we can make that in remote locations we can make that um in in uh, in different you know sizes that make make sense for the person and actually adaptable to to growing which is all really a paradigm shift in itself so i highly recommend people check this out and especially if they're interested in creating uh, abundance for themselves creating uh, passive income for themselves this is a is a great 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 place to to be at this point the reason that what you're describing will make the old obsolete is because it's so much better that it's more profit you know it's more profitable there's more value to it you you know what once once people really fully understand how this works the old does it doesn't make sense to choose the old anymore it doesn't it doesn't like you could choose to live in downtown big metropolis city uh be blazed with 5g contamination everywhere uh be you know just probably subject to all kinds of restrictions of your of the technocratic state of your choice or you can be out on the land where all of those things are a lot um less prevalent and surround yourself with uh beautiful people and 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 create regeneration and abundance for yourself you know but what's the choice there's no there, it, it's literally either you go down the path of dystopia or you go down the path of utopia it's one of the two and i i know what i'm going to choose you know i'll just quickly mention that the refugico and some of the other projects you're working on um you know that they're they're real they're out there they're now being produced you can you can invest you can get involved if you want to and we'll share the websites at the end but uh, my final question is what what you would recommend what you what advice you would give to people they've 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 had their awakening they've gone through the doom and gloom they 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 and now it's now they're in in that stage of okay what can i do what is my next step i think that fits in with the paradise syndicate network also with the fact that we haven't mentioned yet that it's not just you doing this right there's a there, there's there's a whole network of people behind this and the final thing also is you just mentioned also you know we can have dystopia or utopia 
this whole idea of paradise, you know, let's create paradise on earth or the ideal world. People, you know, would often perhaps say that's just, you know, a utopian dream. What are you talking about? So if, if you could consolidate those ideas perhaps with, you know, yeah. the, this other project. Absolutely. So first of all, let's start with the last one, which is how do we get to the ideal? And this is actually a fairly uh, simple thing, just logically. If you have a, again, look at it at, at a small um, condensed and in, in let's say um, closed system, that's the easiest way to, to grasp it. If we had a closed system, like a little village, and we would just constantly make it positive, net positive impact after net positive impact, so we're constantly improving it to make it better and better and better and better and better. Where does a system go towards which constantly improves? It goes towards the ideal. It just becomes ideal over time, right? Because it doesn't get worse, it becomes better and better and better. So that's how you become, how you get from net positivity to paradise. Paradise is basically the end result where you're going towards when you're constantly improving. And that's why it's called the Paradise Syndicate, because it's, it's a project of those people that are shooting to create the ideal versus trying to create something that's only better than what we have had before. And now, um, before, I want, before I go into that part of, you know, what is the Paradise Syndicate? Um, the Paradise Syndicate really is something that has existed even before we gave it the name Paradise Syndicate. You have to realize that the, most of those people also that you just mentioned, people that had their awakening journey and they, they realized the world is, is um, maybe a different thing that they thought it was. And now they're asking themselves, what is it that they should be doing? Really what their core motivation is, and this is a hypothesis that I have, and I'm, I'm quite certain it is so, um, is that they're not just motivated by wanting to go away from the stuff that didn't work. They not just, um, they're not even just motivated by um, all of us, you know, really in, in, in the core of us. And some of us have realized that in some of us haven't, we are really motivated by the ideal. We're m motivated and driven by the ideal. We're drawn to the ideal. Your ideal life is really what makes you tick. This is your vision of what your ideal life could look like. And obviously, some people have, have already you know, tapped into that more than others. So some have a, a wider and clearer um, you know, vision of that than others. But the point here is that really what's motivating us at our core is getting closer and closer to the ideal. Okay? And so now you have to realize that's essentially the, the key motivation be behind CPN. That's the key motivation between, behind somebody becoming, uh, let's say, wanting to become um, a force for good in the world. That's a, a key motivation between for, for somebody to uh, quit a job that they, not, that they don't feel congruent with their values. Um, and, and, and really, it's always that drive towards the ideal. So we really basically have a bunch of, and this is probably millions of people, at, at my estimate currently, probably somewhere between 40 to 30 to, to 300 million people in the world that are like that, um, which is, you know, basically conscious humanity. And, and all of those people, really what they're looking to do is to create the ideal world. So there is this, um, this entity, this ecosystem, this container of sorts of people that all want the same thing, but yet they don't know of, of each other. They don't interrelate. They just don't collaborate with each other. Um, they just want the ideal life and they thought they're the only one. Now that they're thinking that they're one of very few people that also want the ideal life because many of the people that they're surrounded by don't get it yet. They haven't looked into what they truly want yet. They haven't realized they haven't done the wake, wake up journey or the, the awakening journey. So they're not tapped into that reality yet. So that entity that's forming there of all of those beings, all of those businesses, all of those organizations that are in their way working on getting us closer to the ideal world, that is the Paradise Syndicate. That is already the Paradise Syndicate. Even before I gave it a name, it was already a syndicate, which is a group of people that all have the same goal. And their goal was creating the ideal world. And that really was, is what the Paradise Syndicate is as its essence. It is all of us that we are looking to create the ideal world coming together and realizing that that is a thing. Realizing that there is a tribe of people that are all trying to do the same thing. And yet there was no organizational form 
that allowed us to become aware of the fact that there are other people that are also trying to create the ideal world, or that allowed us to collaborate with these people and you know join forces with them, with the, with the other beings that are trying to do the same thing, and they're working actively on doing the same thing. So that's really, and you could call it a different way if you love to want to call it love collective, or you want to call it, you know, the the highest. Uh, the, the unity of the highest good, whatever you might call it, it doesn't matter. It's the essence of can we bring all of those people into one space of co-creation and a focused co-creation towards the ideal and can we figure out what the ideal is and how that would manifest. And that's what the Paradise Syndicate is and we've created for that purpose, we've created a, um, a network which is kind of like you can imagine it like an alternative to Facebook since a lot of people are kind of disenfranchised with Facebook and you know all of the existing traditional um, you know social media websites, we're basically creating a, a network for people to tap in and um, to collaborate on creating creating the ideal world now, through methods, through logic, not through oh, wouldn't it be nice? To, no, we're not. You know, this is not a dream pipe dream kind of project. It is a really tangible. Um, backed by paradigms, backed by business, backed by um, concrete projects, um, project of projects, so to speak. And if you want to know more about that, you can just go to paradisesyndicate.com. You can sign up there. It's free. And then there you can get access to the platform. And there is an uh, entire mini course that we've just done recently, which is um, about half an hour where you basically spill out a lot of the base concept of how paradise works to people which I highly recommend uh, people check out because that's just a, kind of like a Kickstarter in, in the direction towards, towards creating the, the, the best possible world. And then maybe I'll just add as well that this is not something that you are presenting and telling everybody else that this is how you create the paradise, this is how you create the ideal world. This is a collaboration network Absolutely. and it's not for meme sharing. It's for actually getting involved, sharing ideas, meeting up, talking with each other and making this happen. Absolutely. Um, maybe then just to finish, just the different websites then where people can find you. They'll all be underneath this video, wherever you're watching it, but perhaps you'd just like to share. I guess the, the important parts will be um, depending on where people are at and what's the right fit for them. If they're interested in participating in creating Paradise, again, as you mentioned, it's not me telling people this is how paradise works, but it's a collaborative effort. And there is, you know, logic even to how we can uh, connect each other's ideas and which, how we can find, figure out what are the most potent ideas. Um, so that's, that would be on the paradise syndicate.com for those people interested in um, financial abundance, in um, having a, a building system, access to a building system that can outperform whatever, you know, conventional building methods can can do, I would recommend going to refugee.co um, for people that are interested in net positive communities, net positive villages, and they're looking for a place to, um, you know, live and, and be with other um, net positive villagers or Paradisians, as we like to call them, um, netpositivevillage.com. And, and the consultancy is, is uh, netpositivepartner.com. So those are the, let's say, the, more, the four main project at this point, and there will be a lot more um, as the syndicate grows and there'll be more and more people that uh, are tapping into it. And this is important. Again, it's not, you know, my project. The Paradise Syndicate is not my creation. It has been there in its informal shape. And we didn't realize and consciously come to the, to the, to the understanding that that is so. And now we're just formalizing it and becoming consciously aware of it, which is um, allowing us to just step up our collaboration. So regardless of where you are on this kind of four phase, as I like to call it, process of cognitive dissonance, wow, the world is not what I thought it was, whether you're now checking out the doom and gloom and figuring out how everything all, how these elites all are working. Um, although I don't like the word elite because they're not Parasitic. elite, you know, yeah, people at the top of the pyramid. Yeah. Um, and uh, or you are now doing your inner work or if you actually are now thinking about maybe moving out of the city or something like that, I think uh, checking out paradise syndicate.com, finding out what everybody else is doing in that network 
would be a really inspiring and positive place for you to go. I think so too. And I'm again really very much looking forward to um, all of the beautiful souls that are ready for for this uh, move. And you know, there is different steps of different levels of readiness. You know, some people might really uh, love this idea, and you know, as we are seeing more and more people just coming to Mexico, participating in the project. And then some people are like, you know what, I have my life here. I cannot really immediately move, but they can still plug in and, um, and work with us uh, in a virtual form. And that's really how that entire network is being forming, is forming right now. People collaborating on, on creating the ideal. Anything else you'd like to say before we wrap up? Yes. I would like to just say how amazing of a being you are that, that you are, you know, being such an amazing accelerator for getting the right messages out there. And I would just love to see more and more people follow you and your projects because it's really amazing that the work that you're doing, um, getting people connected, giving people a platform to speak, um, really, you know, in, in this super uh, supportive fashion, really connecting to positivity in so beautiful ways. So, so I'm, I'm super excited for, for the work that you're doing. And I'm very, very much excited that we are collaborating and that we can um, have you on the network on the Paradise Syndicate network soon and I guess the more and more we uh, interlace these projects and make it into an ecosystem where people can just plug into that and their all their bases are covered I think that's really where um, where we'll see a lot of um, growth in inside of all of our projects I know you're really busy and putting all your time and effort into this and I'm also really busy and putting my passion and time into this as well as is everybody else so you know, let's, let's, uh, it'll be, it'll be fascinating to see where this all takes us. I have a feeling it's probably going to take us to paradise. <laughs> we'll stop there. Mm-hmm.